My life. Lisk is my life. Michael Rubinger was always meant to be the president of Lisk. All the things that Lisk represents, they course through Michael's veins. Michael should be proud of more things than he's willing to give himself credit for. With a lot of CEOs, they start to develop ego issues that really get in the way of, of being effective, and Michael absolutely has not done that. Look, the dirty little secret about my career, I believe, is I feel like Zelig. You know, I happened to be at the Ford Foundation when they decided to get involved in community development. I happened to be in the right place when LISC was created, and I happened to be around people who are extraordinary. I got a call in my office one day from Mike Sverdov, who had been my boss and mentor at Ford, and he asked me if I wanted to work on LISC. To work on something as exciting as the LISC idea was just too much to turn down. Don't forget, this was, what, 1979, 1980? The banks had redlined a lot of these neighborhoods. They were bombed out. They were disinvested. They were full of crime. We chose to work through community-based organizations because it was important to have the local residents involved. And in many cases, the community-based organizations were the only ones who would work in those neighborhoods. We were not allowed to make grants. It was only loans. And that was a radical notion that you could make loans to these community groups and somehow make those things succeed and the loans pay off. And they did. In the early days of LISC, we were all based here in New York and I was assigned to Boston. Well, Via Victoria for me, as you might imagine, was, um, it was special because it was the first loan I had ever done in my career. The Boston Redevelopment Authority had their own plans for this parcel that we know as Villa Victoria, but at the time was known as Parcel 19. Parcel 19 was the home of a primarily Puerto Rican community. They knew that they were going to be displaced, and we needed help from organizations outside of the community, and that's where LIST comes in. The LIST loan is just absolutely critical because now here is a national organization giving it the seal of approval. And in Boston, um, the person who made that happen was Mike Rubinger. Everything we were doing, we were doing for the first time. But it all worked out. It got repaid, it got repaid on time with interest as it was supposed to. It convinced us that we could do this and convinced us that it could be done. Given the fact that the South End has, has developed right. the way it has, there probably isn't another piece of ground of the size that this is. Exactly. I mean, this is 35 years old now. Right, yes. And it looks great. Yes, it is. It yeah. looks great. Mike, of course, was instrumental in setting up some of the models that would then duplicate it in other parts of the country. Michael came up with the idea that you could do a revolving loan fund to repay and sell loans to foundations to raise money. And I think history will clearly show that that was one of the great changes in growth in the community development industry. I became the CEO in 1999. He's Style is low key, but his engagement is intense. And that's a very good combination. He has a real enthusiasm for this activity, for what he's doing. And that's part of what makes him so successful. There's probably no one in the history of the Western world who's done more community tours than I have over the years. And every time I do it, I'm inspired by it. Why do I get that tingling feeling when I go into the communities we work in? Yeah, that tingly feeling got us off schedule last week. <laughs> Like, could you come on, like, move it along? We've got to pull him away from these discussions with, like, community people. Literally, we turned a corner. He didn't, because he's busy, like, talking to this. So he's engaged. It's amazing to find somebody in a leadership position, like, he's occupied for such a long time, who also really has a strong connection to the programmatic work. Part of it's the impact of what we do and the people who are affected by that in the community. But for me, it's also the people who do those projects, the community groups themselves, the leadership of those organizations is so extraordinary to me. I, I've always felt that they did something that I couldn't do. It's clear to me that he was listening to the field as he 
began to incorporate a broader platform. The Building Sustainable Community Strategy is the most important uh, departure that we've had here since the beginning. As important as the physical revitalization is, we also needed to deal with the other issues. We needed to deal with jobs and we needed to deal with income and with education and with health care, with the quality of life issues. This concept of breaking down silos has absolutely influenced our work here at the City Foundation. I would even go so far as to say federal and state policies have changed because of our approach of doing comprehensive community development. And he's way too humble in that area too. There are a lot of people here at LISC who chose a career in this industry, but who specifically have decided that the guy we wanted to work with and for was Michael Rubinger. So they always say go out on top. He's absolutely doing that. 2015 will be our best year ever. When you add in rural counties, we're in 42 states. That is most of the country. Everything that we do from now on is because we're standing on such solid ground. There's no question about that. So his legacy lives on. Perhaps his greatest legacy is just the vast number of people whose lives his work has affected. And that's been greatly increased because of the work that he's done in, in building LISC, both in its range of involvement and also in the magnitude of its engagement. At the end of the day, it's about equal opportunity. And I think what we try to do is bring practical, pragmatic solutions to some very difficult and thorny questions. I would do it all over again. I would do it all over again. I might do some things differently, but I, I would do it again. I guess the, the, the first thing I would say to Michael is change your mind. I know you're saying you're retiring, but come on, give us a break. We know you're not retiring. You're not capable of it. Thank you so much for the work that you've done over so many years uh, on behalf of organizations like IBA and the Canadian Villa Victoria. One of the things I want to thank you for is your commitment to seeing communities as a whole. Michael, you gave me a piece of advice many years ago, which is to never assume that the funder knows more than the grantee. It actually has made me, I think, uh, a better foundation leader, so thank you for that. Michael, I hope you, you're able to recognize just how good a job you've done with LISC, and I thank you on many, many levels. My wish for you is that the next chapter of your life is as personally rewarding for you as I believe this last chapter has been.